Why most AAA games have no soul. What is happening to the studios we loved? How can they make some of the greatest games of all time then turn around and just make disappointment after disappointment? It felt like the end of AAA games, but then Elden Ring came out. Yep. Wait, am I in the picture? Okay, all right, good, I am. I thought I was about to get, like, just taken out. All right, I was about, oh, man. Why is Elden Ring such a breath of fresh air when most mm -hmm. other AAA games feel copy-pasted? And why did this game cause so much controversy? Elden Ring is game of the year? The game is You f bastard, man. To answer these questions... To be fair, that guy speedruns the game. So yeah, he hates it probably more than Quantum does. We first need to understand That's that happy when Elden Ring came out, the game defied everyone's expectation. Elden Ring sold 12 million copies in the first two or weeks. Or no hits again. Even yeah, Miyazaki, yeah. the mastermind behind Elden Ring, was surprised by the success. And to put the sales into context, <laughs> yeah. Elden Ring at release was on pace to sell the same amount of copies as some of the best-selling open-world games of the last decade. GTA 5, yep. Skyrim, and Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you really think about it, Elden Ring should not have been performing as well as these other games. Don't get me wrong, Elden Ring is an incredible game, but most FromSoft games are pretty niche and usually target- They're extremely niche and they also don't have a bunch of like established IP, like Legend of Zelda or uh, Grand Theft Auto. Like boomers know what Legend of Zelda or Grand Theft Auto is. They don't know what Dark Souls is more hardcore and advanced player base. By nature, FromSoft games shouldn't sell as much as Zelda or GTA. But this time, Elden Ring did. Why? What was different about Elden Ring and what set it apart from other FromSoft games? The answer? Nothing really. Yes, Elden Ring was, it was open good. World, so unlike other Souls games, you could avoid certain bosses and areas. Yes, the yep. lore was some of the best I'd ever seen in the game. The world was so immersive that I don't think I could ever find everything in the mysterious world of the lands between. Seriously, Elden Ring is a masterpiece. Go play this game. But I would argue that almost every FromSoft game is a masterpiece too. And just like the other Souls games, Elden Ring still targets a hardcore player base and the gameplay is still punishing as hell so why Elden Ring is a fucking joke all of the games except for maybe Sekiro are a fucking joke if you're having trouble in Elden Ring on a boss ding ding summon the fucking hats yes almost yeah get good then is Elden Ring capturing a much larger chunk of the gaming market. There is a huge demand for high quality AAA games. Oh, not absolutely. Not much of a supply. I mean, imagine you're at a restaurant and you have a hankering for some steak, but they're out of stock. Okay. All they have left is some burnt scraps of cooked steak they can shovel onto a plate, or you can get a delicious Seems honey good to baked me. ham with a sweet honey drizzle. Oh, so Although ham. you wanted a steak, you choose the honey baked ham because the steak scraps just aren't edible. This is the triple yeah, they are. we are in right now. Millions of what the hell do you mean? looking at the piss poor options, praying to Gabe, the god of steam, to give them anything fun and exciting. It doesn't matter what genre, mm -hmm. as long as it's good. Just give us something edible and satisfying. So when Elden Ring came out and the world saw how amazing this game was, people who were originally intimidated by Souls games looked at Elden Ring and said, screw it, let's try it out. I got Yeah, there was a lot of people that came in and they started playing it because of this. And I think this also happened on a much less extent with demon souls the reason why demon souls might have been more accessible is like demon souls is a joke of a game it's very easy to easy to play easy to beat but also it required having a ps5 and uh you know i think there's like a uh, 700 and something people in the world with the ps5 right now so uh you know limited audience there <clears throat> ps3 i i am looking at a clip of the remastered version of demon souls I am not talking about PS3, I am talking about PS5. Nothing else to play. So like the guy choosing the ham over the burnt steak, mm -hmm. I would argue that Elden Ring's meteoric success is not only a byproduct of how good the game is, but because there's such a small supply of good AAA titles right now. Yep. Elden Ring really is the best option on the menu. However, like every industry, there will be people who hate or love something purely because of its popularity. Mm -hmm. And man, do we have a few in the gaming industry. Oh, bro, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of that. Why like, people that hate games, hate things because they're popular.
Surprising this time, many of the people who hate Elden Ring are developers at other studios. I wonder infuriated why. Infuriated by Elden Ring's success. Yep. Some developer who said, Elden Ring's UX is so bad that I can only imagine FromSoft's devs smoking at their desks and using CRT we monitors. I guess these developers felt that the game violated certain tenets of game development, and by violating these rules of development, Elden Ring didn't deserve this its success. Why would these devs be so angry about Elden Ring's success? Who cares if Elden Ring didn't follow the rules? I can see why the devs would be mad, because most of the time whenever people talk about Elden Ring being good, People are like, man, it's not like those other games. Those other games are fucking garbage. Elden Ring is good compared to that other game that's garbage. So yeah, it's because they're being compared with it and they're being told their game is garbage. It makes sense that they're not gonna be happy about that. Game development. It's not like Elden Ring's success affects them. Well, mostly. I can right. see why developers at Guerrilla Games were upset. Elden Ring released only one week after Horizon Forbidden West. So you could say that Elden Ring overshadowed the hype around Horizon. So Horizon possibly didn't perform mm -hmm. as expected. The reason is petty and in no way Elden Ring's fault, but at least I can see where the Guerrilla yeah. Games frustration comes from. There you go. Why were Ubisoft devs so upset? None of their sales were affected by the release of Elden Ring. Now, remember, these were only a few people and not the whole studio who were angry at Elden Ring. However, the response from gamers to not only these devs, but Ubisoft as a whole. Well, I think also like a lot of this is like a meme. I'm sure that Ubisoft makes plenty of good games that are fine. And I haven't played one of their games for quite a while, so I can't really say. But yeah, I'm sure they probably make good games sometimes. No? Maybe I should play one. Maybe I should play one and really find out for myself. Showed us something really interesting. Gamers are tired of playing the same thing. We are tired of the formulaic nature of Ubisoft and most other AAA games. Sure, yeah. It has a satisfying shooter-looter game loop. The graphics are great, the mechanics are well-tuned and executed, and the story's acceptable. Bummer? Yeah! It's exactly the same as all other Ubisoft games. It's just another copy-paste. You see, when every user interface, every store, and every game looks relatively the same, we notice. It's like hotel- I love how you can look at, like, the one thing that you will always be able to understand. You won't be able to understand the character menu. You won't be able to understand the game menu. You won't be able to understand what's happening on the screen. But goddamn, you will fucking understand immediately what the battle pass is. And if there's a gotcha system, you're going to see, okay, this is the current banner. This is the basic banner. This is the, uh, you know, the special, like, promotional banner. Okay, these are the modifiers that increase the banner characters. Okay, yep. And then there's your two currencies that you need to buy with your third currency. And then you buy your third currency with your fourth currency. But you could also buy the third currency with this currency from the store and then you use that currency what you buy with your real currency and then there's an exchange rate of uh, one to 100 but if you buy a hundred dollars of it at a time you get 20 percent off for your first purchase so it's actually a little bit like yeah a lot each piece of art is theoretically different but somehow feels and functions exactly the same uh -huh. so when the first few assassin creed games came out they felt new and exciting. Running around the Holy Land of Rome, leaping off buildings, sneaking or hiding in hay bales, it was unique. But now, I can barely tell the difference between Assassin's Creed gameplay and every other Ubisoft game. Ubisoft thinks if they just change the era and location of each game, we won't notice. Well, it clearly is true that people don't notice because you just posted their, their sales figures and it seems like people don't notice. So, like, let's keep that in mind. Uh, number two... I think that one of the reasons why these companies choose safe options is the same reason why we get a new Spider-Man movie every other year. It's be or a tr new Transformers movie or something like that. It's because everybody knows Spider-Man will sell. Transformers will sell. It works. And a lot of these companies have massive amounts of money riding on these investments and they can't afford to have an L. That's the real reason. I mean, one has knives and one has guns, right? But just like hotel art, they may look different, they don't feel any different. It's the same game with a new coat of paint. 
This reason is why Ubisoft devs reacted the way they did. They have been taught that to make a successful game, you need to follow a formula. So when a studio like FromSoft makes Elden Ring without the formula, and it's incredibly successful, it infuriates developers who have had their creativity restricted and pushed into a box. Now, these devs who criticize FromSoft should take full responsibility for what they said in a public forum. However, I also blame AAA studios like Ubisoft. I get so mad about people that put out a hot take on the internet, and then they get mad whenever people respond to it. It's like, bro, whenever I tweet something out and I get a bunch of hate for it, I don't cry about this. Like, yes, it might annoy me because I think they're wrong and I'll vent about it. I'll be like, oh, these guys are so fucking stupid. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. But I'm not going to be like, oh, well, I'm getting harassed. No, like it, it, people disagree. That, you're not a It's a discussion. It's a, it's a disagreement. What is what's wrong with people, man? Stop talking if you don't want people to talk back. Forcing their teams to create unimaginative oh. copycats of their previous 10 games. We can get mad at a few devs all we want, but the real problem comes from the Ubisoft's executives choosing to be formulaic. But why are the leaders of Ubisoft and other AAA studios hell-bent on producing the same type of game? That's why, why force your devs to work on the 100th Assassin's Creed? Oh my god. I know what that is. That's the bird from Dark Souls 1. And he's on a computer. That Bro, why is he on a... Why is a bird on a flat screen computer? Oh my god. Like, that's a... <sighs> Creed, when they want to work on something new and exciting. The answer? Stability and money. Yep, this may be obvious is. to everyone, but milking an IP over and over again is the easiest way to make money as an entertainment company. It's I mean, they've really sold Skyrim 10 times over the last 10 years. The reason why we've had a new Call of Duty 19 years in a row, and also why 2020... Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2... 2. This is the second version of Modern Warfare 2. Uh-huh, that's right. And it also includes Warzone 2. The, the popular sequel to the popular game called Warzone that was a big favorite in 2020. 22's top 20 best-selling games are all existing IP or sequels. Let the me see. 20 uh, existing IP, well, obviously, like, uh, number two, Elden Ring is not, uh, let's see, FIFA, yep, I'd say so. Man. Best-selling games are all existing IP or... I would argue that Sonic Frontiers is unique enough to probably not be counted. Sonic is an existing IP, and so categorically, he's right by saying this, but I think Sonic Frontiers, the, well, the reason, okay, listen, listen to why I'm saying this. It's because the, the premise for Sonic Frontiers is a completely open world game, and it is something that Sonic has never tried before. It's, it's a new avenue of video game. Do you see kind of what I'm saying? It's an open world game, yeah. Yes, they have. But it's still Sonic. Okay, so like in, in my mind, I think that whenever a game deviates enough from what its original premise was, it effectively becomes a new game. Even though it's not a new game, it effectively becomes one. That's how I see it. Be saying IP? No, I, I, I understand that. I'm just saying that like in functionality, I think Sonic Frontiers is more unique. Like, okay. Can we, can we agree that FIFA 2022 is about the same as FIFA 2023, much more so than Sonic Frontiers was about the same as the previous Sonic game? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm trying to say. I, I, that's, that's it. Please, just, that, come on. And, and you can say that with any of these other ones. Sequels, except for Elden Ring. Seriously, look at this. Elden Ring is the only game on here that is a new IP. Categorically What's accurate. What's even more crazy True. about this list is that two of the top 20 games a new IP. What's even more crazy... Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. 2. I wonder 
who the guy was that was like, okay, guys, I know you're going to laugh, but bear with me here. We release Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 again. Well, what are we going to call it? All right. Get this. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. 2. That guy right now, youngest junior vice president of the company. Made him a lot of money. Mm-hmm about this list is that two of the top 20 games were Call of Duty games and three of them were sports sequels which yep. are notorious for being the exact same as their predecessor well, no complain, they're not the same because they changed the numbers on the jerseys what do you mean about these games being soulless copycats all we want but we're the ones buying these soulless games in droves and for companies to <laughs> they put gambling sponsors in it Come up with brand new games and IP is risky, so studios will make sequels for as long as possible if we keep buying them. Yeah. So I don't ever see studios not making sequels when we buy them year after year. That said, there is a negative effect on your brand when you don't release something new or innovative. Think about it. What is one of your favorite games? Remember when that game was released and how you felt about the developer of that game. Yeah. Pretty good, right? Then think about that, that specific Blizzard. developer's most recent games. How do those new games compare with your favorite game? And how do you I mean I feel like it's like from software obviously I'm very happy about uh I, I with Blizzard I like Dragonflight, and I actually like Overwatch 2. Weird situation there. Um, with Nintendo, I feel like Nintendo takes so many shots, they miss a lot of their shots, but I'm actually really looking forward to playing Sonic Frontiers. I haven't played it yet. I'm going to play through the whole thing. How do you feel about that developer now? Probably not great. For me, it was Blizzard and Warcraft 3. Uh -huh. This game made Blizzard my favorite developer, and I wouldn't allow a bad word to be said about them. But now, Blizzard has released cash grab after cash grab, yeah. not to mention everything else they have done. And I can't help but look at Blizzard. Well, they did. you got to keep that in mind. And done is also past tense as well, so, you know, minor, minor nitpick there. I, I mean... There's no evidence that there's any sexual weird stuff happening at the offices. And there's no way it could happen because in Preach's video, nobody was at the office. Problem solved. Well, we don't have any more problems of sexual harassment. Yeah, because nobody's there. There we go. Totally, totally issue solved. Disappointment. A bad game happens sometimes. Oh, yeah. But Blizzard hasn't made a good game since 2016 with Overwatch. Not to mention they somehow butchered Warcraft 3 with the- I would say, I, I would argue that I actually think that a Dragon, I think Dragonflight is a good game. I also think that Legion in a lot of ways was ultimately a good game. And I would even go as far to say that I think Overwatch 2 is a good game. That's right. I will, I will say it right now. Right now. And by the way, while we're on the topic- why the fuck does every other fucking person get sponsored to play Overwatch 2 except me and I'm the only person that goes out of my way to defend it? What a bunch of shit that is, huh? The release of Reforged. Can't believe it. I just can't imagine defending Blizzard anymore. The Blizzard brand has fallen from one of the greatest video game developers to a company that is compared to EA. But as we saw with Blizzard in the beginning, the opposite... I feel like that's also, like, th there's a certain amount of, like, gamer circle jerking that's happening there. Because, like, EA, it's in the game. Bro, people love Madden. People love these games. I, I, like, b try to step outside of your fucking little... A little box and realize that there are a bunch of people that buy the new game every year and they love the new game because they like playing those games it, it might not be popular on YouTube commentary but just because you're not the target audience doesn't mean the game is bad it's like whenever I go and I watch some uh, you know like that you know, like weird, like fashion dress up game on like the Nintendo Direct. I'm not the target audience for that game, okay? I'm pretty sure I'm not. 
But guess what? Somebody else is, and they might like it. Yeah, like most mobile games. Yeah, exactly. Like, people are just so, uh, yeah, FIFA's massive. Yeah, FIFA's huge. Huge bad take, Asmon. Explain to me why that is a bad take. FIFA and those sports games for normies anyway. Yes, they are. That's who they're there for. It's an objectively money grab game. Every game is a money grab. What are you talking about? They're making all of them for money. All I'm saying is that these games that people are shitting on constantly, maybe have you ever considered that they just weren't made for you? Like, it, I, I don't understand. That's what people, people want the new Madden. They want the new game with the new jerseys. It's stupid, but they want it. When you release something new that just blows people away, like mm -hmm. Elden Ring, gamers will have your back, even if the game isn't perfect. I mean, look at one of the biggest controversies on YouTube featuring the Act Man yeah. and Quantum TV. I this guy that. made a video saying, like, Elden Ring sucks or something, and he hates everyone that plays <laughs> Elden Ring. So Actman made a video about like the worst take in Elden Ring. The drama from these Elden Ring videos escalated to way more controversial stuff. Like yep. bigotry, copyright, demonetization, oh, yeah. and the Actman trending as the number Oh yeah, one. this was a war story on Twitter. But all this stemmed from arguments about Elden Ring. Why? Uh -huh. Because FromSoft had gained some huge... No, it's because all of these fucking self-appointed... Like, fucking, they're like the musical hipsters that are like, yeah, I, n I don't like Drake. I don't like Kanye. Like, I, I don't listen to any of them. Like, my favorite artist is Aesop Rock. And, you know, I don't listen to any popular music. Anything that's on the radio, like, they totally sold out. They're, like, so bad. It, it's just like, what the hell's wrong with you? You know, Aesop Rocks, he's great. He's fucking amazing. None Shall Pass is, like, one of my favorite songs. But listen, so is Drake. So is, uh, fucking Kanye. Absolutely. Yeah, they're also good. It's just people whose personality is not liking what's popular. Points for releasing pure art. And like any extravagant piece of art, people will have visceral reactions, both positive mm -hmm. and oh, negative. Is. Which is also why people get so angry when you change the story and lore of video games with TV shows like Halo. <laughs> or the witcher yeah. i mean witcher 3 was a beloved game and a piece of art to no, people don't get angry that you changed the lore people get angry that you made the lore worse very different so many people not to mention the comics so when you mess up the story and lore in the show the community isn't toxic when they react negatively they are passionately no. asking for you to respect that piece of art as they do now, all this said, I don't just want to bash on oh, AAA shit. studios and walk away. True, constructive criticism should have ideas for improvement, not just ranting. So if I had the opportunity to consult a AAA studio, I would suggest the Pareto Principle to be applied company-wide. This principle, also known as the 80-20 rule, is the observation that roughly 80% of consequences come from 20% of causes. Mm -hmm. One company effectively applying this technique is Google. During my time at Google, I saw how they allowed their employees to spend 20% of their time working on something the individual thought would most benefit the company. Both Gmail and AdSense came from this practice, and the former made Google more than $54 billion just in 2022. A more applicable example is Fortnite. The original Fortnite concept True. was developed from an internal game jam put on by Epic. And it's also, uh, there's that, and then some other examples of that is that pet battles in WoW that are like a big popular feature, people like them, and like obviously, you know, again, maybe we're not the target audience for that, but a lot of people do like pet battles. Uh, they were made just by like one guy. And, and a lot of things like this have just been made by like one guy. He just came up with this idea and there it is games. Although they don't strictly follow the 80-20 rule, a game jam is just one example of its application. Letting your team take time to work on new and innovative ideas. Mm -hmm. Just pure creativity with no deadlines. And creativity is the key to a company's longevity. You yeah, creativity doesn't make money though. That's the problem. You need to constantly innovate to stay alive. And it's what the AAA industry desperately needs right now. So how can we get more games like Elden Ring? AAA studios need to allocate 20% of all their resources to working on new and innovative games. 
No deadlines, no parameters, just pure creativity. Let your developers work part-time. Yeah, I don't think they're going to re-release Assassin's Creed again. Yeah, I, th I think that's what they're going to do instead. Yeah, let, let's let's release Assassin's Creed again and uh, see if that sells. Oh, it does? Oh, remember that game you used to play? We'll play it again. I'm on something they are passionate about and be amazed at what they'll create. I'm not saying stop making sequels. As we saw, AAA studios make a lot of money from sequels. And sequels aren't always oh, yeah. a bad thing. I'm stoked for a Hollow Knight 2 and I pray for a Warcraft 4. However, for AAA... AAA studios to be profitable while garnering the love and support of the gaming community, AAA studios should look at Elden Ring as an example to stop making formulaic games. Can we also admit that Elden Ring was very formulaic in a lot of ways? It's just that they used the From Software formula. It was extremely formulaic. But you can go from playing Dark Souls 3 to Elden Ring and like 80% of what you did in Dark Souls 3, it's like, oh, I get this. I understand that. Okay, this works the same way. Okay, so these are Titanite shards. Got it. Okay. And all right, so this is where you upgrade your gear. Got it. All right, so this is Firelink Shrine. Okay, round table hold. Okay. And then, okay, so you can use parry with the smaller shields. And then, okay, heavier weapons. So you have more poise, right? Okay, got it. Yeah, like a lot of this. So it's not about the 80 20 rule it's about either one of these numbers being a shit number yeah it, it's a, it's a bad foundation the reason why it worked well and the reason why everybody like one of my most popular videos recently about gaming was about that dark souls 3 mod that's the main thing while applying Pareto's principle to let their developers conceptualize and build masterpieces we all will appreciate, mm -hmm. like Elden Ring. Hey, thanks to everyone who joined our Discord and submitted their favorite indie games for this week's video. The indie game our community voted as their favorite for this video was Inmost, made by Hidden Layer Games. I don't know what that it's is. It's a puzzle platform game, and it's currently being sold on multiple platforms. So go check it out and join our Discord to let us know what game we should feature next. I actually think this was a pretty good, uh, what do you call it? Um... Uh, this is a pretty good game. I mean, a pretty good video. I, I liked it a lot. And, uh, so Elden Ring is 80% Dark Souls 3, pretty much 80-20 to me. Yes. Yes, Shift video. No, I, I think this is a great video. I, I, I liked it a lot, but I, I just, I, the only part of it that I disagree with is the fact that I don't like how, I don't like how there's so much of a fixation on, there's so much of a fixation on, like, this 80 20 rule or whatever because i just don't think that's what's going to happen i think the reason why this stuff happens is very simple it's just because these games are safe options they're easy to go with there's no problems with them and that's all there is to it yeah it, it's very easy to do that i think the problem is not that the found it, the problem is not that they're not being creative it's that the foundation that they build off of is bad that's why everybody gets hyped up for a mod of Elden Ring or Dark Souls 3, but they don't get hyped up for an entirely new game of Assassin's Creed. That's the difference. It's because the foundation is boring. That's what I think. And also, again, like these games are meant for the wide, wide audience. Because you've got to keep in mind... Uh, like, oops, wrong one. Uh, so this is the gaming, this is the entire gaming audience, right? All video gamers. And the people that are actually talking and playing video games are like, like this. So it's like, whenever you make a video like this, it's only going to its maximum, it, it, its maximum reach is going to be here whereas the marketing for something like assassin's creed is going to be out here as well smaller i i don't know i think that there's a lot of people that consume gaming media there are a lot of people because i was thinking about that too but it, it's not like it's a one percent situation i think it's a lot probably 20 20 percent 25 percent of gamers do
But I mean, like, unless you're including mobile games, things like, uh, you know, Candy Crush. But I'm talking about like, you know, AAA console games, etc. I would say like 25% of people, probably somewhere around there, consume content about it. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's impossible to say. There's no point arguing about the size of the circle. All I'm saying is that sometimes games like this Assassin's Creed game and like FIFA are made for this brown area, not the green area in the middle. They're made for that average, you know, everyday gamer that just plays video games. They like FIFA. They like sports. And that's it. Brown? Yeah, oh, okay. All right. I'll put it as, as blue. Okay. How about that? Do you feel better about that? Okay. Um, let's see here. And, uh, yeah, that's green. Yeah, whatever. All you guys, do you guys get what I'm saying? Okay, you get what I'm saying? I'm going to link you guys the video. Uh, I love, uh, I love videos talking about this and I, I love watching them because I think they're very thought provoking. They're, they're the most interesting videos that I like to react to because they are the, um, just, just more interesting. That's about it. Yeah, am I still farming Emeril in Dark Souls? Apparently, no. Now she's farming me. I saw her watching my reaction to her reaction of my reaction play of her playing the game. Yeah, I, I saw her doing that earlier on, on her stream. Yeah, so it, it's the other way around now, actually. A trip.